Hi, my name is Lauren Goebel, and this is my senior project, Attempting to Adult. So my first activity under the entrepreneurial learner pillar of a portrait of a graduate is setting up a credit card. It was really easy and um, a really simple process. And it's important for me to start building up my credit score now. And it's definitely something that I'm going to be using in the future. In my next slide, I'm going to show you the steps that I took to set up the credit card. So the first step is clicking the apply now button. I went with a discover card. The next step is choosing your card design. There are a lot of pretty options, but I ended up going with the one I have highlighted on there. Then the next step was reviewing and accepting all the terms and conditions. It did take a while to read, but it was very informative. And then I checkmarked the box at the bottom. And then I was in contact with a live agent. She just asked a couple questions and then she approved me for a credit card. So the next activity for entrepreneurial learner um, was putting together an appropriate interview outfit. So I actually had two college scholarship interviews a couple months ago. So the outfit that I'm wearing in the next slide is actually what I wore to those interviews. Those interviews were really great experiences. They were a little stressful, but it was good practice for the in interviews that I'll probably have to do in the future, such as like for a job interview. I am really glad that I dressed the way that I did. It was just more professional than dressing casually and more appropriate for that setting. So that's the outfit that I wore to my two interviews. Um, interview suits should be simple and neutral in color. You don't want to have any bright, flashy colors or patterns. Um, another tip is to just make sure that your clothes accommodate for the climate and the season and to just focus on dressing professionally and appropriately for the position that you are applying for. And in almost all cases, this means wearing a suit. So the next activity under entrepreneurial learner that I did was writing a thank you note to someone who has made a positive difference in my life. I really, really enjoyed this activity, but it was so hard for me to choose who to write it to. There are a ton of friends and teachers, classmates, coaches, role model figures, and family members in my life that I'm very blessed to get to know and I'm very thankful for. But in the end, I decided to address this thank you note to my very best friends. Next year is going to be very diff different and difficult without them, as we'll all be going to different colleges. It's going to be a major change from being around them 24-7, so I wanted to write this to them as just a tiny way to show how much I'm thankful for them. So I decided to write my thank you card to my sisters. Um, I In my card, I told each one of them what I was thankful for about them. Then after that, I got an envelope and I addressed it to my older sister's house and I made sure to um, also put a stamp in the corner of that. And then I just put the thank you card in the envelope and then I sealed it off and it was ready to be mailed. So for my first activity under the globally minded pillar of a portrait of a graduate, I decided to write a letter to nursing home residents. It is just so simple and easy to write a letter and you have no idea how much that that just might brighten their day. I really enjoyed writing my letter and through this process, I also learned how to properly address an envelope. I personally decided to write my letter to um, a nursing home that I have visited a couple times before. With everything going on in the world right now and with the coronavirus, they probably don't have many visitors. So I just wanted to brighten their day and let them know that we're here for them and that we miss them and we're thinking about them.
So my next activity under Globally Minded was to research three charities. And honestly, this was really hard because there were so many charities that I love to donate to that it was really hard to choose. But in the end, I ended up going with three that really stuck out to me. Um, helping others is something that I'm really passionate about. I really love volunteering and getting involved in whatever ways I can. And I just hope that in the future, I'll be able to donate to these charities. So the first charity that I hope to be able to donate to one day is St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. I've personally seen the effect of cancer through different members in my family, and it's something that's really close to my heart. St. Jude's is one of the world's premier pediatric cancer centers, and its mission is to help treat and find cures for children with cancer or other catastrophic diseases through research and treatment. Treatments invented at St. Jude have helped push the overall childhood cancer survival rate from just 20% when they opened to more than 80% today. And I think it's just amazing that at St. Jude's treatment for children is free and no family ever receives a bill. And this is only possible because 75% of the costs of St. Jude are covered by public contributions and donations. So contributing to this cause is really important to me and I wanna be able to support this however I can. So the next charity that I hope to be able to donate to one day is the American Humane Society. It was founded in 1877 and it has helped countless numbers of animals since then. This is meaningful to me because I'm a huge animal lover. I have a huge soft spot for animals, so much so that I'm even considering becoming a veterinarian. The American Humane Society has spent over a century caring for animals both large and small, wild or domesticated. Contributing to this cause would be important to me because my donations would help animals find shelter, urgent care, and forever homes. It would also help to end animal cruelty. And Feeding America is another charity I hope to be able to donate to one day. It's important to me because I want to help people however I can, and a good place to start is helping to fight to end hunger across the country. This charity provides service to 46.5 million people throughout the United States. It serves 5.4 million individuals each week through a network of 58,000 pantries, meal service programs, and other charitable food programs. By contributing to this charity, I could help make some impact on ending hunger in the United States. So the first activity that I did under the resilient pillar of a portrait of a graduate is cleaning a bathroom. And while this may not have been the most fun activity, it is very practical. This bathroom was in need of a cleaning and I'm sure there will be many more times in the future that I find myself cleaning a shower and toilet or spraying Windex on a bathroom mirror. So this is the before. And this is the after. So the next activity that I did under the resilient pillar was trying something new and failing at it until I got it down. So I chose to learn how to do a front flip on the trampoline. I really thought it would be easier than it was, but it was actually a lot harder and frustrating at times. <laughs> I learned a lot from this, a couple things being, it's not easy, you really need to focus on getting height on your jump before you flip, and that you're going to fail a lot before you succeed. But overall, I really did find this activity enjoyable. And I hope you get a good laugh out of my mini epic fails on the next slide. <laughs>
And a quote um, I found by Samuel Beckett says, ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. And this is very applicable to my many fails on the trampoline. I would fail and it'd be kind of frustrating, but I would try again and I would fail again and again and again, but I would fail a little bit better until eventually I was successful. So the first activity under the balanced pillar of a portrait of a graduate um, that I did was going for a walk. Being stuck at home due to the quarantine, I found myself outside a lot more. I love just taking the time to slow down and take a walk and just enjoy the weather. Although it was kind of chilly being 61 degrees with a 14 mile per hour wind that day. But overall, I really did enjoy it. So I made sure to take a trash bag with me on my walk. I was actually doing some research and I found that the average person produces about 4.4 pounds of garbage each day. And this can make up to 56 tons of trash per year. While 75% of the waste that we produce is recyclable, only about 30% actually makes it to a recycling center. This means that nine tenths of all the solid waste in the United States does not get recycled. And if that were increased, it could drastically cut down on the amount of trash that winds up as litter. Because not only does litter impact the environment, but it also affects the land animals. They can get poisoning from spoiled food. They can ingest food wrappers in containers or drink contaminated water. These instances can lead to sickness, internal health problems, or even death for the animals that find themselves confronted with human garbage. In addition, 88% of the sea surface is polluted by plastic waste and more than 14 billion pounds of garbage is dumped into the world annually. Ocean pollution affects more than 817 species around the world, a figure that has increased by 23% in the last five years alone. It has serious consequences on marine life. Many birds, fish, and other ocean dwelling animals are often unable to distinguish between trash and food. And this is so sad to see, especially since this problem can easily be fixed by responsibly handling litter through recycling, using eco-friendly products, or even just making sure trash gets into trash cans and picking up any trash you see laying around. So yeah, these were just a few statistics that I found. I really did enjoy taking a walk. It was a really nice day, and I even had time at the end to stop by and say hi to the horses. So the next activity under the balanced category that I decided to do was um, choose a hobby and show it off. So when I was first trying to figure out what hobby I wanted to do, I instantly thought about soccer because it's one of my biggest passions. But most people know that about me. So I also wanted to include another hobby that um, some people might not know about me. So in the next video, you will see me doing different soccer skills and activities and you will hear me playing the piano in the background. I still have a lot more to learn about playing the piano, but I've been playing for a couple years and I really enjoy it.
So the next activity that I decided to do under the balanced category of a portrait of graduate is an hour of yard work. I actually ended up doing three and a half hours because there's a lot of grass to mow, but I honestly didn't really mind because I find it relaxing. So I really did enjoy this activity. So at this point, I came across a little surprise. There was a um, little blue egg in the grass. At first, when I was mowing, I almost did not see it, but luckily I was able to stop in time and I went and I grabbed some flags just so that whoever would mow the lawn next would see it and not accidentally run over it. So as you can see, there was a lot of grass to mow, but I actually really did enjoy it. And also Peep Romeo, he is so cute. So these were all of the activities that I did for my senior project. Um, sure, this didn't look like the traditional senior projects that the classes before us have done, but when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. <laughs> Um, I think it's really cool how we were able to adjust and put a new spin on senior projects. You know, this year we're graduating, so I think it's really fitting that we got to embody the portrait of a graduate and show how we are entrepreneurial learners, globally minded, balanced, and especially in light of these circumstances, resilient. I really did learn a lot through this senior project of attempting to adult. From learning how to set up a credit card account, to writing letters, to enjoying nature and learning how to do a front flip on the trampoline, to even cleaning the bathroom, I've practiced, perfected, and even gained new skills to this project. This experience overall was a great one and definitely lived up to what I thought it would be. I really did find most of the activities enjoyable. I loved getting to write letters to the nursing home residents and also a thank you note to my sisters. Taking a walk outside was really refreshing and getting to show off my soccer skills and playing the piano was also fun. While cleaning the bathroom might not have been the most enjoyable, it was practical. And while I did start to get a little bit frustrated when I couldn't get down that front flip on the trampoline, it was worth it in the end when I succeeded. Looking back after completing these activities, I realized that adulting can be a lot harder than it looks. I really have appreciated doing this adulting project, so I want to say thank you to all of the teachers and to everyone who helped to come up with it. Our senior class may not have been able to do the traditional senior projects where we go out and shadow, but this 2020 reimagined senior project has really been useful and a great experience.